Welcome everyone, welcome to another episode of Commercial Poppy Roadshow. You're here with Helen and Renee. And we rarely do meet each other, uh, but um, we uh, have cross path here in Sydney uh, at our office. Yes. And uh, so most of the time Renee's on the road, busily uh, looking at property, and most of the time I'm on the call with clients or I'm walking around uh, doing the videos and contents uh, for everyone out there. So uh, the reason for this video is that um, we want a little bit more information about what you're seeing in the market and how you do inspections because some people, some of our clients will go up there and see the property themselves yeah. and they literally don't know what they're looking for uh, or looking at yes. even. Uh, and also uh, if anybody out there is doing this on their own, what yeah. should they be doing? Okay, well, you, there's a few, there's many things that you should be doing, many things, which is why people engage us to do that for them because they're time poor. Yeah. If you have the time, try and do some research before you, you get to the property. Yeah. So know, I guess, what you're buying, whether it's a fish and chip shop or it's an office space, who the company is, follow them yeah. on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all those yeah. places yeah. to get, I guess, a bit of information and gauge how they're going. Yeah. And then when you're going to physically look at the property, I guess the two big things that we're always looking at is aircon and roofs. Yeah. They are like the bane of my existence. <laughs> so you look down and you look up? Yes, as soon as you walk in, look up. And when you look up, you want to look for obvious leaks or a change in the, the tiles, the ceiling tiles, or whether the pitch of the roof or the guttering or old leak signs down the wall on the outside of the building internally. There's sometimes also a smell of mold you want to look out for if you can in those very closed, <laughs> unventilated spaces. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the air cons, whether they're working and they're at... Because if it's a hot day and then the air cons seem like they're struggling or they look like they're old infrastructure, yeah. um, and depending on the type of air con, because as yeah. we've had discussions before, you could be in a massive building on one level and if the air con goes, that could be fifty to $96,000 depending on the size of the space. Absolutely. Yeah, so these things are important to look at, definitely. And what about the, the differences? I mean, we, we go and see properties that are offers, retail, warehouse. I mean, we see all sorts of resi, yes. resi commercial. Yes. I, you could you could name it like anywhere in, in the commercial space. We sort of see properties and, and you go from different areas. And of course, um, you, you'll get more wear and tear in Queensland. Yes. Um, less wear and tear uh, pretty much in New South Wales City. But in Melbourne, there's a different thing. It's, there's more dampness. There's more. Yes. There's, yes. there's different uh, geographical locations. Geographic yeah. Like if you're looking at somewhere in Tully, which is one of the wettest points in Australia, they don't often have guttering. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Um, same as cans can be like that as well. So yeah, it depends geographically where you are. Seaside, obviously, you're going to incorporate more rust due to the salt air. So things like that you want to look for as well, particularly if it's a steel structure, things like that. Um, yeah, like we are everywhere. And then there's different idiosyncrasies to each individual type in the sense that, um, for example, if you're looking at food, we want to know about the grease trap. Yeah. And we've had discussions in before. Yeah, and just had on one of our properties. They are a nightmare. Um, councils were often doing a blitz for a little while there pre-COVID yeah. uh, in reference to upgrading everyone's grease trap. And as some people probably are aware, that as the landlord often falls to you as your responsibility unless something else is written in the lease and that could be anywhere from fifteen to twenty six thousand dollars. Yeah. So with grease traps in, in retail, often if you are buying a ground floor retail as part of a complex, you'll find that if it's a longer strip, you'll find four or five of these shops are linked to one big grease trap at the back of the complex or on the basement of the complex. And then that grease trap is pumped out on either a monthly, quarterly or a half yearly basis, depending on how much is used. Yeah. And that cost is actually shared uh, by your tenants now but if the capital of the actual grease trap that needed to, to be replaced so often they collapse or they need a bigger one because the council comes along think it's not good enough then that falls on you as a landlord and we've replaced ones for small tiny restaurants in like in Seymour which costs us about eight grand and then I've replaced the bigger one up in Rockhampton which costs about 17 grand and yeah. then the cost can go on I mean if you're doing one for a giant complex it'd be 50 grand yeah. right? but there's four of them you know, yeah. going in there so that is one of those capital costs and you want to check that you know it's not if it's something that you are up for that you make allowances for yeah. because if you're buying an uplift property that's yeah. part and parcel of it if you're buying a center forget what well, it should be taken care of yeah yeah and yeah. it'll depend as well whether strata yeah is going to contribute or it's 
amongst those particular owners yeah. that are utilising it. Yeah, it's yeah, so start also, yeah, it's yeah. an important thing yeah. as well. And then office spaces. I mean, when we go to office spaces, what would you look at if we were looking at an office space? Well, again, it depends on the office space. So if we're looking, uh, you want to see where it is geographically within the city, within the complex itself, because some obviously if you're on the main road, then you can gain more rent because you're, you're getting the drive-by or the walk-through yeah. by trade. Uh, so we want to check that out and we want to check out parking, who's allocated what, yeah. uh, and then just whether the building can change because often, you know, you'll have the old industrial areas that will turn into office space. So is it an office space in a shed? Is it yeah. an office? If it's an office space in a shed, then we want to know about heating, cooling, things like that as well, whether, you know, it's going to be added expenses. Yeah. Um, well, normally with um, office spaces, I tend to look at the lift yes, as well yes. because um, lifts are one of those things that if you have three and one breaks, yes. then your tenant starts to complain. Yes. And then they start feeling like, you know, they, their clients can't get up there, they can't get down enough time for yeah. lunch and all of this starts to impact and it yeah. especially happens in high rises where yeah. you typically have one broken at yeah. any yeah. one time going. Um, also, uh, sometimes some of these uh, buildings actually have amenities as well, so they yeah. might have a gym or a pool for their, yes. for their residents. Yes. Which may end up being higher strata as well. Yes. Um, and I guess in the long term, when I look at office spaces, I sometimes look at uh, whether it's dual entrance or, yeah, or, or yeah. one entrance. Parking. But with the lifts. Oh, parking's a really good one. Yeah. Parking's really important. But with the lifts, again, if you're buying a whole office building, you want if you've only got one lift then as you're looking to purchase it you want to see the longevity of that lift yeah. whether that infrastructure is going to go in the next five years and maybe get a quote and then use that as yeah. a as a I guess negotiation point as well yeah um and the servicing history of the lift as yeah, well service history, yeah. Yeah. definitely but parking parking yeah oh, massive issue again there are some areas around australia where, i mean in residential we've had some math, massive growth in some areas so Parking may not have been an issue in the past and now potentially could be an issue for some areas. Um, and whether the cost of the parking in the area is going to have an impact on, you know, the type of tenants that you're going to attract. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the type of tenants that may actually want a particular type of or amount of parking. Like, uh, recently uh, we had a client a, dent, a client who was looking for a dental practice for their own occupation, and they said, oh, we need to have a minimum of five parking spaces. Yeah. Like, that's just for our staff, yes. right? Five parking spaces, and we need access for our clients to be able to park. So your mums bring kids in the yeah. afternoon for dental appointments, need to have somewhere to park. It doesn't have to be part of them. They go, look, if it had a council car park, or if it's, you know, in a comp place where, you know, you've got woolies and coals and there's yeah. just general car park, they like that kind of thing. So yeah. for them, their particular client who are looking for that, as yeah. an owner occupier, but if they were a tenant, they would be looking for exactly the same thing. Yeah, well, even with the parking, again, um, logistically, depending on the business in there, let's just say it's a restaurant that doesn't open for lunch and it does dinner trade. Yeah. So often, you know, they will have the parking and they'll run the, the parking at the dinner trade and then everyone else uses it during the day. So you get the dual, I guess, benefit of that parking where you're going to have extra spaces allocated to you during the day and then at five o'clock when everyone goes home, the restaurant opens and, yeah. you know, yeah. So there's always, you need to be aware of what is it that I'm buying, what is the business in there, and you want to look for competition and complementary. So are the trades around you where you're purchasing, are they complementing what you're purchasing, or are they competition? Now, I've looked at some places where there are three bike shops in the one complex, yeah. which is just stupidity. Um, Except for Asian bubble tea. I always say that when you, <laughs> okay. when you go to a place and you get the Asian bubble tea, and they are 500, 500 metres, there's three or five of them, you're yeah. like, yes, I'm in. I suppose. All right. Well, we can, the only one, the, no, hang on. The only other one is the Gold Souk in Dubai, where the whole shopping centre is literally <laughs> jewellery shops. That's but other than that, yeah. I always find it weird that they're next to each other. I know, and yeah, I'm that's like, true. Really? Yeah. But yeah. it's like that's the definition against everything we've learned in marketing. Is like, why do you want to be next door yeah. to a? Not the shop that sells exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you, this, I, I look for that. At least I, I would like to always let the clients know. You have complementary or you have competition. Yeah. Um, and that allows you to, you know, factor in, okay, well, how is this guy going? Is, you know, are they going to keep complimenting for ages or is something going to happen? Like, for example, the old milk bar might have complimented the news agency and now they're kind of two dying industries. Yeah. Although the milk bar is coming back a little bit in some areas. But, 
you know, are they going to die together or are they going to keep on complementing yeah. each other? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's really good. And then finally, you know, warehouses, you know, that's the, the, the flavour of the month. It is, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's just a little bit crazy. Yeah. Warehouses. Yes, they are. The man caves or a lot of them now, I, I kind of feel like they were initially traditionally targeted for the man cave and we have seen everything in warehousing now from beauty yeah. to um, online shops to... I saw a law firm. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. 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 Um, very, very interesting how yeah. they put a law firm in there. Yeah. But it's really interesting because I always think that, well, this is a compliant for use thing, which is most important in a yes. lot of um, spaces. I mean, in retail, it's really versatile. Yeah. Compliant for use, you can put a law firm in, you can put a dentist in, you can put a hairdresser in, you can yeah. put a cafe in. They're all yeah. committed use, right? Yeah. Very, very versatile. You got office space and I've seen commercial kitchens like just this complex where we are the complex before it has a commercial kitchen yeah people do commercial cookery for uh, well not so much YouTube channels but for all the big magazines and things like that they do all the photography and that was approved yeah and um, they have uh, but you know you can have a law firm you can have IT here you can have a training college here you can have an association here I've seen dentists on second floors, yeah, um, and there's some medical centres now with lifts that will go to the second floor as yeah. well. Uh, but with warehouses, having like lawyers who are not traditionally would ever be there, no. have um, beauty therapies who traditionally would no, never be there. Never there. Um, sometimes they're just not compliant for use because they're light industrial, right? Yeah, and these aren't traditional light industrial. No, um, even like accounting firms yeah. don't. And I've seen accounting firms in places like this, and they don't quite. Com- uh, but no one actually says anything; it just kind of continues yeah, on. Yeah, they just continue on and just keep on rolling. It is interesting because those man caves, that industrial light warehousing, was traditionally targeted for, you know, the plumber with extra tools, or the boat, the jet ski, the baby boomers who might have wanted to park their caravan there. Yeah. But that's not really who's taking up the use for them is what I'm finding when I'm travelling around. So what do you see when you normally go to see a a warehouse space? Well, the warehouse spaces are, you know, they're filling up fast. So I'm also looking for parking because a lot of them now are not one owner, one occupier. They're actually becoming go-to destinations. So parking can be a bit of an issue. And we need to obviously, when we are looking for our clients, you know, hey, just want to let you know that parking is an issue or it's not an issue because they've kind of changed use they're not traditional tradies dumping off their stuff they're now go-to destinations where yeah. parking is becoming an issue issue um, and a lot of them are also picking up you know the the online Amazon shipping things like that those sort yeah. of people are using them as well uh, and anyone who's got an online shop so when I'm looking at them again I want to see we well, want to look for truck access for one if it depending on what's dominating yeah. that little group of yep. sheds truck access is hugely important shipping access yeah. as in you know the small couriers getting in yeah. and out and, and allocated areas for them yeah. um, and warehousing with depending on whether they've got like a second level and whether the door goes all the way up and they can pallet lift yeah. it up and, like you want to look at all those things um, and then if they've got the shop downstairs you want to check that the aircon's okay there's no leaks yeah uh, yeah uh, even the positioning, you know, are they getting um, good signage on the, on the side to whatever might be the busy area? Yeah. yeah, it's a funny little market out there at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. And mezzanine floors, they just pop up oh, everywhere. <laughs> mezzanine floors, council approved, engineering approved. Do they actually look structurally okay like they meet the current code? Yeah. You know, again, in some of the warehouse spacing, spacing because they're now going for a different clientele, disabled access oh yes disabled access. disabled bathrooms is there some within the complex is there some within this particular business yeah yeah and, and I mean they can be a, a deal breaker in some instances particularly if like I said the use is changing and you want to attract a government tenant or a, a disability support agency or you want to go the NDIS route yeah. those things are important to try and attract that type of tenant yeah yeah absolutely so like we say we'll Part of your job is to go and suss all these things yes. out, yes. and that's what really makes us different in terms of a buyer's agent and what we offer our clients. We offer the education to mentor them through the process. We yeah. do strategies to help them work through what they actually want in the long term, and then we've got someone like Renee who is part of our team who goes out there and really scouts and also looks at these properties. Yeah, and, um, and steps the client through it on yeah. what I see. So sometimes the clients come along and they really enjoy that. 
Uh, and then other times I will do the, the call with them, yeah. the conference call, and walk them around while I'm there because yeah. sometimes they want to see things like, well, what is next door and how busy is this road and yeah. what are my other options around here and what is it converting to yeah. and what is this area? So. And I think that's the major difference because if you do a Zoom call and you do a virtual tour with an agent, it's very different to the way that we would do it because they never look up, they never no. look down, they never go and say, oh, hey, what's across the road? Would you, know, would you walk yeah. like 500 metres down the road for yeah. me? They never just sort of go, oh, they just go, well, here it is. They just yeah. walk you through as you would do. Yeah. residential walkthrough yeah. but it's very different in the yeah yeah and i don't know whether they hone in on the, the cracks and the the mold and the things that are pretty that we look yeah. at and go mm, yeah. what needs to be investigated here yeah. so you know when we do the inspection it's not about the stuff that are pretty we're not there to look at no. how beautiful it is we're actually there to actually see if there's a fault yes yes and we used to chat i like to chat to the tenants everyone knows I like yeah. chitty, i'm pretty chatty i like to say how are you going and i think it's important to see are they are they happy do they have plans to buy it themselves are they do they look like they're expanding like is barely anybody can fit in there you know it's important to also be aware of what they where they're at in their journey of, of having that business um, and be curious about them uh, and see whether or not there's longevity there like I said sometimes if you're buying we've had a few places 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 where clients have been buying um, a, a complex and your current tenant can move into the space next door and so by the time they end up purchasing it, they've got a higher yield at the lower price and they're massively happy about that. And that just comes from just having a conversation with the tenant, with any old property manager can do any old time, as well as a sales agent, and they just don't seem to do that. No, no. Yeah. And that's what you part of unearthing and part of the value yes. that we bring in the process yes. is that you get to know from beginning to end that even if you're not around, that that property is cited. And that's one of the things we make we make sure that every single one of the properties that our clients are into, we cite the property. Yeah. Regardless. One of our teams will cite the property, one of our team will report back to you, one of our team will walk you through it. So you actually have detailed other standing of it we don't ever believe that just because it's a commercial property and it's not an emotional buy you should not go and inspect it because inspection yeah it, there's some things that can't google map can't no, tell you google there's, maps cannot and there's tell some you. things rp data can't tell no. you um so rp data is great to tell you maybe the history of the area maybe how resi is going google maps is great when you walk up and down the street but what they can't tell you is how many people are visiting the cafe next door yeah whether you have a, a delinquent <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> two yep. doors down. Yeah, uh, whether you've got the graffiti on the back wall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, and really, whether you even have parking, or whether there's like a no stopping sign at yeah, the front. Yeah, whether the too. lift's broken, or yeah. the tenants are fighting and hate each other, or yesterday the cops were called, or the tenants aren't <laughs> trading. Like there have been a couple of cases yes, where the tenants was not trading. We're like, well, I'm just going to check this out before the agent gets here, and lo and behold. Yeah, no tenant. So that's all part of the job, and that's what makes it so essential. That must. That's also our vetting process to make sure what's good on paper. Yes. Because all glossy makers <laughs> is all glossy. Yeah. Yeah. I am. look great. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They do. They yeah. do. And and sometimes those numbers don't stack up when you get into the nitty gritty of strata, is it? Or freestanding complex. Who's who's paying for the cleaning? Yeah. Oh, the tenants do it themselves, and you go there, and the tenants go, No, I don't do it. No, I don't do it. He might do it over there, but he's leaving. So yeah. then it's another cost that you have to incorporate into your yield and you know how you think you're going to go with your property. So there's lots of things that we unearth that are not on paper yeah. or in Google Maps or, oh, yeah. or RB data. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's what makes it essential. It makes us different to yeah. everyone else out there. It's leading in the forefront, uncovering, and knowing about areas as well, yes. right? Yes, yes. about areas. Areas. Mount Tambourine, places like that where the water has to be carted in. Tamworth, where we yeah. had water issues. Different places where you've got the PFAS issue the with, with, with the bases, yeah. um, with the military bases. There's lots of things that people just go, oh, that looks great and glossy, let's buy there. And until you know what's going on geographically in the area or the different idiosyncrasies of that area. Like I said, in, in Mount Tambourine and places like that, water has to be carted up there. There is no no lines, um, no, no town water. So these things are important to know. And in the lease, who's paying for it? Are you paying for it? Is the tenant paying for it? Are we heating hot water up there, which is another added cost? Yeah. yeah, there's lots of little things around Australia geographically that I guess also gives us the edge because we are in and out of those areas a lot. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and when you do, one of the things that we um, we find is that when you do so many deals in one area, you actually have a lot of um, weight in what you say. Like, so when you talk to the agent and they go, "This is what is happening," and you go, "No, no, 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 we've just done the deal up the road." <laughs> 
know. We know. Yeah, we, we know. know. We know. Yeah, and, and that's what um, makes us, um, you know, put our fingers on the pulse. And that's really important about your commercial journey, especially if you're starting out. So, if you're looking for a more detailed strategy and you want to have this personalised and work out what's the step by step you can get to financial freedom through commercial property, reach out to me at helentarrant.com or help or email me at helen at commercial property cashflow.com.au and I look forward to helping you in your commercial property journey and also join our Facebook page as well. So until next time, every day again. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on the road. Yes. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.